I want to take this opportunity to thank you all once again. Certainly thank uh, Richard for uh, contacting me for the, to be a participant uh, in the sharing of what you all have going on here uh, tonight. Certainly thank God for the elders here and the fine job that uh, they are doing here. And certainly thank God for you, uh, for what you are doing here. Those of you who have made great sacrifices uh, for this congregation that many perhaps don't know. Uh, I just want to pause and just thank you uh, for what you have done for the cause of Jesus Christ. It's all because of Jesus, it's all for him that you do what you do. And, uh, and we thank you uh, for the opportunity here tonight. I want to thank God for... Uh, the Center Point Church of Christ, uh, who is here with us tonight, and we're so thankful to God for their presence to support the work and, and to be here to so support uh, their preacher as well. And I'm so thankful to God for that. It's a, it's a kind, kind gesture. It's very encouraging uh, to be preaching every Sunday to a congregation. And then when you go somewhere, they're there too. <laughs> you know, we're so thankful to God for, for that. I want you to know that uh, I looked up... Uh, in the dictionary, and uh, I looked up the word beautiful. Uh, it was in the Webster Dictionary, and, um, and Webster said in his dictionary, it had, for the definition of beautiful, it had Erica Parker. <laughs> and that's my lovely wife who's sitting out there. <laughs> and, uh, and we're so thankful to God for her. She is my backbone. She is my strength. And she is my everything. And I am so thankful to God for her. Uh, she is here with us tonight along with some of our children. And some of the grandkids are here with us tonight as well. And, uh, and we're so thankful to God for, for them for being here with us. We're going to, um, we're going to uh, tackle the subject that was handed uh, down to me. Uh, the subject is fellowship. Fellowship, and I want to encourage you to turn with me, if you will, to First uh, John once again, where we were, where we were before. First uh, John chapter uh, one, and we'll begin with verse one. Uh, and we're so thankful to God for for John, the apostle John, the beloved. We thank God for his writing and his encouraging the churches. Uh, in those particular areas. And this writing he did here, perhaps to mostly to uh, houses where uh, the individuals worship in certain houses back then at this particular time when John wrote this. So John is writing them to encourage them on some things to be careful of. And, um, and one of the things that he's going to share with us is going to be talking about fellowship. It's going to be interesting how he addresses it. But turn with me, if you will, to 1 John chapter 1, the beginning of verse number 1. The Bible said, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and with and, and was manifest unto us. Verse 3, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may, be, may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus uh, the Christ. We want to just draw in or focus in on verse number 3, though we may address some of the other verses. Um, it says that ye... Uh, that, that which we have seen and which we uh, and heard declare we unto you that ye also ha may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Fellowship, the word fellowship, uh, comes from a Greek word, kononia, a very interesting word. It just simply means share. It means to share. It means to participate. Partnership. Uh, his to have things in common, in which what we're doing tonight, we are participating, we are sharing uh, tonight. So here John, in his writing, uh, he is mentioning about fellowship, very interesting, fellowship. 
One of the things that was going on, there was another teaching that was something else that was going on during the time of John writing. And John wanted to make sure that he said, the term he used, he said that ye also may have fellowship with us. With us, which also suggests or indicate that there's another fellowship out there somewhere. He, he said, I want you all to have fellowship with us. He said, truly our fellowship is with the Father. Uh, and his son, Jesus Christ. Then he said, well, the question would be then, John, how do you know that the fellowship that you have is the right fellowship? He said, well, I want you to know because he said, because we have seen it. We have seen him. We have heard him. We have hindered him. We have actually spent time with him. Who? Uh, eternal life. Who is this eternal life? The word of life. Who is this word of life? John said in, in John chapter 1 and in, in the gospel of John and chapter 1, you know how he said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. And then in verse 14, he said, and it was made flesh and dwelt among us. So he said, we have seen it. We have heard him. We have hindered him. We are sure that the fellowship that we have is the fellowship with the Father. I want us to understand that there's three things we want to kind of touch bases on tonight, if, if, if God's will to give us the time to do it. One is the basic or the foundation of our fellowship. And the other one is the nature, nature or uh, the function of fellowship. And then three, if we get a chance to get to it, the symbol of our fellowship, the symbol of our fellowship. The basic of our fellowship is Jesus Christ, is the basic of our fellowship. We are here even tonight because of the man who John, at one time in the book of Revelation, John was writing in the book as he was hearing it. He said, he, well, the text actually said that he was, um, he, was, he began to cry. Uh, he began to cry. Y'all got to kind of bear with me because I'm a preacher that walk around a little bit if you don't mind. Um, is that he said that he began to cry. The reason why he began to cry is that because, you see, they looked in heaven and couldn't find nobody. They looked in the earth and couldn't find nobody. They looked under the earth and couldn't find nobody. They needed somebody to break the seal, to open the seal that can bring it to mankind, that mankind may be saved. And what happened is, is that they couldn't find nobody. And John began to cry. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, that was movement off the throne. That they begin to hear somebody stepping off the throne. And the elders said to John, they said, John, wipe your tears. There's no need to cry anymore. Behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. It is this Lamb who, was, who, who stepped into the world, put on human flesh. He became the incarnated God. He became uh, God in human flesh. This man is called Jesus Christ, and he is the basic of our fellowship. He is the reason why we are gathered together to, to, tonight, because of the Savior of the world. John said, we are absolutely sure that our fellowship is the fellowship that you need, is the fellowship, it is the colonial that you need. You need to uh, share this Jesus. You need to participate with Jesus. You need to partnership with Jesus. So here it is the fundamental basic of our fellowship is Jesus Christ is coming together because of him. And as we said before, that is why we're here tonight. And then John go on and say, and notice what he said in verse number four. He says, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. You know, uh, it's interesting that one one year, my wife and I, we uh, were on our anniversary. We decided to go uh, to Arkansas. and we, That was a historical place there we wanted to visit. And we visited that place. 
And that was a guard there. And um, we began to talk to that guard and we began to just, just, just conver conversate with him and, um, and then discovered that he was a member of the body of Jesus Christ. And when we recognized that, he got so excited. His joy was full because he met somebody that was of same uh, faith that he was of. Uh, somebody in the body of Christ. And what are you saying, Brother Parker, is that when we meet people who are in the body of Christ that bring joy into us. He said that your joy may be full. This individual was excited because he met somebody in the faith. With the, and then we got excited because we met him. And then, of course, the church that he was uh, attending uh, uh, it was a friend of mine, Lord Harris. He used to be the minister there in Mississippi. And I've known him for years. And, uh, and, and, and we end up going and worshiping uh, that particular Sunday at that particular congregation. But this, what happened is, is that when we meet people that's in the body of Christ, we come together, it brings joy unto us, it brings fellowship unto us, it brings kind of near the sharing and the participating in the partnership uh, that we have and our joy is, is get excited and just think about it. have you ever gone anywhere and you met somebody that you've never met before and you discover that they, they, they are a child of God you know, you get excited because of that and your joy lift up because you met somebody that's a member of the body of Jesus Christ it is really interesting and, uh, and then John go on and say in verse 5 it says this then is the message it says uh, which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. God is light. God is righteous. God is pure. And in him is no darkness. There is no sin in God. There is no error in God. Uh, what is happening is is that there's another teaching out there that's saying that Jesus Christ did not come into the flesh. And so now he is addressing this. And when you go into the rest of the book, you get a chance to see uh, the, how, him, how he is going back and forth with fellowship and with love uh, and with the Antichrist and that sort of thing. But so here he wants us to understand that you got to make sure that your fellowship is with God. Your fellowship is in the light and not in error. And he said, now, if you fellowship with us, we are sure for a fact that our fellowship uh, is with the Father. Then he said, now, in verse number, uh, verse number seven, it says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Christ, uh, Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us of all sins. If we walk in the light, the word walk is a, uh, a word is progressive, is a word which from the Greek means life or living. He's saying that if we are living in righteousness, if we are living according to the will of God, if we are living uh, in light, if we have a lifestyle of living according to the will of God, he said then we have fellowship with him. We have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us of all sins. So then therefore, we need to fellowship, he said. We need to fellowship with Jesus Christ. The basic of our fellowship is with Jesus. The function, if you will, look at uh, Acts chapter 2, very interesting passage. Acts chapter 2, and beginning with verse uh, number 41, we are uh, very, very familiar passage of scripture to those of you who teach individuals uh, the gospel. This is also written off in there. Um, in verse number 41, the Bible is clear. Uh, the Bible tells us, and, and they that glad to receive uh, his words, watch this now, let me just get there. And they that glad to receive his word, uh, uh, watch this, I just want to get there, make sure we, we get it right. Uh, and uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get used to my little thing here. 
It says, and they, it says, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Watch this. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking the bread and in prayer. We can see here that those 3,000 souls that obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, they first continue in the apostles' doctrine, the teachings of Jesus Christ, which is the fundamental basic, is the foundation on which we stand in fellowship. They continue in that teaching, he said, and in fellowship. They was, uh, they was sharing and they was participating and they recognized the partnership that they had and watch, and watch the partnership and how they valued that partnership. Look, look at the next, verse, the next verse, verse 43, it says, and fear came upon every soul and, and many wonders and signs was done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things common. That's fellowship. Having something common. We are coming together with a common thing in mind. He said they were together. We need to be together. We need to stand together. Not because, and, 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 and let us not get caught up into the world to cause uh, the color of skin to cause division among us. The Bible teaches us that we are to be together. When, when these, these were all Jews, but you know what? They was from different nations. They came from different nations and they all came together speaking different languages, had different cultures, but they brought them together. Uh, he said they had all things common, even though they spoke different languages. They could understand each other. But the common cause of their coming together was for the cause of Jesus Christ. In spite of rich or poor, you know, black or white or what color they were, they came together. For a common cause. And that is the cause that we ought to come together. This set the pace. This what happened at the beginning. And we should continue this in this world today. And watch this. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get down to uh, uh, the symbol uh, of, our, of our fellowship. And watch this now. It says in verse 4 to 5, uh, it says, And sold their possessions and good. Watch this. And poured them to it, all men, as every man had need. They came together. And if there was an individual there that was without, the one who had, even if he or she had to go and sell what they had to make sure the one who was lacking, they would make sure that he or she would have what they need. I'm telling you, we need to come together to stand together that the world may know that we are the body of Jesus Christ. We need to stand together. And watch this. They had everything, everything common. They came together and watch this. And they sold their, their possessions and every man had need. They made sure that everybody uh, was able to, 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 to be, to, to have everything that was necessary for their functioning. Uh, and, and let me just say this. This is a prime example of what we should be doing. We should come together. We should continue to, to stay in the apostles' doctrine and teaching. We should stay there and we should fellowship. Breaking the bread. We should commune. And we should definitely be in prayer. We should always stay in prayer. This is the functioning. This is how it actually happened. This is what took place uh, in the early time. As a matter of fact, in the beginning of time, in the beginning of the church that is, we can see how these individuals and how the joy that was there among these individuals and how they loved each other uh, in spite of the differences that they had. They, they loved each other because 
they believed and trust and have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And look at verse number 46. It says, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking the bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. They fellowship from house to house. They invited people to come over to have a meal with me, you know. Come and sit in this fellowship. It's interesting that we could just come together and, 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 and fellowship. We can come together in spite of the differences uh, that we have. We can still come together and have a common cause for the cause of Christ. We can come together and we can talk and we can commune and we can share with each other because we are God's children. We are God's children. We are God's children. It's, that's, that's the fundamental fact. That's the basic of it all. Because we are God's children. And we are to come together for the common cause. And look at, if you will, in Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, and the verse is number 20, 26, Matthew 26, and verse number 26. And notice what Jesus is saying in his writing. It says, in dealing with the symbol of our fellowship, the symbol of our fellowship. Notice what it says in Matthew 26. It says, as, and as they were eating, uh, Jesus took bread and gave thanks and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, Say it, take eat, this is my body. And, 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 and watch this, my friends. In the ancient time, in the Hebrew world, in the Old Testament, whenever they were invite someone to sit and have a meal with them, according to their customs, it, not only, it was not only that they was coming together just to eat a piece of bread or just to eat a piece of meat or drink a little wine, it meant quite more than that. What did it mean, Brother Parker? According to the ancient custom, that when you were invited to sit and eat with a Hebrew, they were saying that you are family. That you are family. And even to the point of bringing people in for marriage. When you come to the table of a Hebrew and you will sit with them, they are saying that you are family to me, that you are family. It is not just having a meal or just sitting down and having a good time, but it's indicating to the person who came to sit and they felt the warmth. They felt the love when they came to sit to the table. And it, it was so overwhelming when a person was invited to come and sit and eat with a Hebrew. It's saying that you are my family. It's saying you are my family. And then, of course, Jesus, he took the, the cup. He took the cup and watch this now. It said, and he took the cup and, and gave thanks and gave it to, to them, saying, drink ye all of it. Verse 28, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Watch this, my friends. In the uh, Greek or the time when Jesus came into the picture, when they would invite people to come and sit and have a meal with them. As we said before, it was just not just 
just trying to feed somebody or just give them something to eat. It was saying much more. What was it saying, Brother Park? What it was saying is, is that when Jesus said, come and sit, Jesus was saying to those individuals that you are my equal. That's one of the reasons why the Pharisees had a problem with Jesus because he was eating with sinners and, and tax collectors because they knew what this was saying. It was saying much more than just having a piece of bread with somebody or just feeding somebody. It was saying that you were my equal. Do you not know that this is nothing more than what fellowship is? It is partnership. It is partnering together for a common cause. It is coming together to get the message of God to the world. We have a great responsibility as the children of God to get this message to the world. Watch this now. Look at when Jesus prayed in his prayer, he said, neither pray I for these alone, but also for them which shall believe on me through their words. That they all may be one as thy father art in me and I in thee. That they may be one in us. Watch this. The latter part of that verse says that the world may know that thou hast sent me. In order for the world to know, he said they need to be one. When they see us coming together, standing for a common cause to get the message of God to the world. And then we come together and we strengthen each other. Uh, if you want to grow in Christ, if you really want to grow in Christ, start fellowshipping with one another. That's strength. They encourage you. You encourage them. Don't you know that when we come together and we begin to sing on Sunday mornings or Wednesday night or when we come together, when we begin to sing do you not know that singing is that speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs? That is that speaking to yourselves that is reciprocating. That's uh, for us. That might be somebody here that um, that's that is struggling with something in their lives, and they're and they're down in their spirit. And somebody over there singing, "Jesus is a rock in a weary land." You know, they are hearing that, and then uh, somebody uh, over there singing that uh, he is a wheel in the middle of the wheel. You know, they, they begin to sing these songs, and they begin to hear these songs, and then they begin to sing the songs. And so it is reciprocating. What is happening is, is that we are sharing, and then we are encouraging one another when we come together and begin to share Jesus with each other. It is a strengthening thing. If you want to grow, fellowship. If you want to grow, fellowship. And I know, I know that we are living in a fast-paced life. A fast-paced life. And, and somebody may say, well, all the time I have is on Sunday mornings and Wednesday night. That's the only time I have for God. And that's the only time I have for you too, you know. They might be saying, that's all the time I have. But let me tell you something. We did not come into this world to gain possession of this world. Because, you see, the things that we have, when we die, they're going to be passed on to somebody else. You will not take anything with you, nothing. You will not take anything with you. So, you, you, so there's no need to try to spend so much time in trying to gain uh, part of this world. It's not going to do you. That, that was, a, that was a, a, a man who came up poor. And he, um, he, said, he said, one day I'm going to be rich. And he started working diligently. He started working hard. I mean, seven days a week. And he, he got married. He had children. And, and he continued to work and, and work. And, and then exactly just what he said. He said, I'm going to become rich. He became rich and famous. And one day, he got sick. He went to the doctor. The doctor put him into the hospital. And uh, the doctor told him that he was about to die. That he was about to die. 
And so all the reporters came in, they was talking with him and they was asking him questions and, and he was answering the questions and then the interview was over and they was the, uh, the newscasters, they was, they was uh, packing up and getting all the uh, audio and visual uh, equipment together, leaving. There was one young man came to him and said, he said, sir, he said, if you had to do it all over again, he said, what would you do? He said, I will serve God and spend more time with my family. A man who had gained everything he wanted. And now he is full of regrets of not spending time with God. Not spending time with his family. I'm telling you, there's, you can get all the money in the world you want, then what? Jesus said you can gain everything. <laughs> you can get everything. And then what? And then what? You have everything. You have all the money you want. Then what? Then what? What is going to happen? That was another man who, um, uh, he treated his wife real bad. I mean, he really mis he abused her. Uh, he wouldn't buy anything, hardly anything. He wouldn't give her much. And, and uh, he, was, it was, he was a very rich man. And, uh, and uh, he had $25 billion. Rich man, $25 billion. And um, he told his wife, he said, he said, when I die, I want you to bury all of my money with me. I want you to bury every penny that I have with me. And then one day, the man died. And uh, the woman's sister came uh, to her and said, now I know that you didn't do what he said to do. She said, yes, I did. He says, I buried, he told me to bury every penny that he had. He told me to bury it with him. He said, and he said, she said, and I buried every penny. She said, I wrote, I wrote a check <laughs> for $25 billion and stuck it in the grave with him. And he got all of his money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, is that we can gain the whole world and lose our souls, my friends. We, we won't, we're not going to bring anything with us. Nothing. So it's not about how much we, we can gain. It's all about living the life. It's all about fellowshipping. It is all about connecting. It's all about bringing the influence of heaven to the world. It's about us bringing Jesus Christ to the world. It's not about how much we can gain. It's how much we can give. It's, that's what life is all about. How much we can give. How much can you give? It's not about living. I mean, it's not about how much you're going to get because I, I, I've never seen, well, I, I did see one time I was watching on, on television and, and the guy uh, loved his car so much, and uh, and uh, and she, he said that he wanted to be he wanted to be buried in his car. Yeah, uh, old fashioned car. I mean, he had it down. He had uh, refurbished. He had remodeled. I mean, he had really restored that vehicle to the T. And uh, and and he said he wanted to be buried in it. And don't you know they buried that man in his car? Yeah, yeah, it's, it just went on to the grave, to the ground, it's, you know, but it didn't go no further than that. But it went to the ground, it buried in the, in the ground. But the thing here is, my friend, I really want to get over, on, over to us that we need to be doing just what Jesus Christ said do. We need to be fellowshipping among one another. We need to be sharing among one another. Do you not know that when Jesus Christ, when Paul wrote his letter, to the Galatians, uh, he said that even though that the Greeks 
and the Jews, at the Gentiles and the Jews, that was always a difference and always a conflict there. And uh, he, wanted, he, he wanted his readers to know, in Galatians, he wanted them to know that there's neither Jew or, nor Greek, there's neither born nor free, there's neither male nor free male. He said that we all are one in Christ Jesus. We all are one. We are all of the same birth. We all of the same birth. You obeyed the gospel of Christ just like I obeyed the gospel of Christ. We were baptized into the body of Christ. And we ought to take this message to the world. It's wonderful to know that the youth that you have here are there in South Carolina right now. Out there door knocking and, and spreading the gospel. That's what it's all about. Sharing the message, sharing what you have to people who don't have. It's amazing to hear uh, the awesome work that you guys are doing uh, in that particular area. And let me just get ready to close out. I know our time is running short. Um, the whole Bible is all about a king and his kingdom about his citizens and about his laws. That's what it's all about. It's all about Jesus. It's all about his kingdom. It's all about his citizens. That's us. It's all about his word, his law. So we are to take the glory of God, the influence of heaven, and we are to take this and bring it to them. Somebody brought it to you. Somebody brought it to me. And we ought to take the same thing that was brought to you, brought to me, and we ought to take it and share it with others. We got to get it over to everybody else. We got to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am elated to the fact that you have invited me to be here, to be a part of the great work that you guys are doing here. And I am so thankful I am so thankful to you for the invite, the invitation. And, uh, and we also have, and, and let me say this before time runs out, we also have on June, June, uh, July 14 and 15, we're going to be having the youth. We're having the youth gospel revival. And we have already contacted Richard about getting some of the youth here involved. And they're going to be speaking on that program that we're going to, uh, that we got coming up. So they, they'll be speaking. And we're looking forward to seeing some of you all over there that we can sh continue to share the gospel of Christ, continue to share the things that God has given unto us. Certainly thankful to God for Brother Gallagher. Brother Gallagher uh, has come and he has spoken. He has taught class, the, the Bible class there with us. William has come. And you know, William, he's saying the uh, uh, Amazing Grace. You know, he sung the Amazing Grace. And we're, and we're so thankful to God for him for coming and singing with us. And it's, it's a blessing. And, and I thank you so much, William, for coming and to be a part of that. I want to thank all of you all. Um, last of all, fellowship. Remember, fellowship. The base of our fellowship is Jesus Christ. The function of our fellowship is going from house to house in sharing the things that we have and sharing the, and, and, and making sure those who are in need are, are, are have the things that they need. Make sure they don't, they don't go in, in need any further. Making sure that you're there and you're participating. It, 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 it's not just to know that a person ha has needs. But it is participating. It is partnering with those individuals. It is coming together to assist. It is having a common cause. And then the, the symbol of our fellowship is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I will not eat or drink of this until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. What Jesus is saying Jesus is saying on Sunday mornings when we come together, Jesus is saying, come and let's share a meal. Come and come and sit with me. Come because you are my friends. You are not servants or just servants, but you are my friends, he said. 
He said, you are my equal. He said, come and share a meal with me. It's, it's vitally important to understand that Jesus said, you are my equal. You're equal with me. People say, well, no, we're not equal with, with Jesus. But the text teaches that uh, John said, he said, look here, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be like when Jesus Christ come. He said, but one thing I do know, I'm going to be like him. I'm going to be like him. Yes, we're going to receive our glory when Jesus Christ come back. We're going to be glorified when Jesus Christ come back. So the thing here is, Jesus said, come and share a meal with me. Fellowship. Fellowship. Let's continue the fellowship. Find somebody that is not of the same race, same color, members of the body of Christ, and let's start passing phone numbers. Let's start contacting each other. Let's start talking with each other. And let's start growing together. The text says in John 17, 20 and 21, why? That the world may know that God had sent Jesus. He can, they can look at us and see that God has sent Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. At this time, will you bow with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, our God, we're so thankful to you for this day. Thank you for all of your many blessings. You've been a good God to us, and we thank you. I ask you, God, to continue to bless us as your people, that we can continue to come together and stand as one, that the world may see you in us, Father, and that they may glorify you, Father, because of what they are seeing with their own eyes. Thank you, God, for Richard, the minister here at this congregation. Thank you uh, for the elders here, Father. We thank you so much for the workers here, the members who are diligently working for the cause of Christ. Thank you for this great congregation, Father. We ask you to continue the blessed Father. Let me continue to reach souls for the cause of Christ. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father. We'll close this prayer. But before we do, Father, I want to say thank you one more time. Thank you, Father. God, we pray this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. We pray. Amen. Amen.